Well, hello there, and welcome to Waste Matters on the Air. We've got a very special show today. We're going to have Dave Wharton, the Sustainability Officer statewide for the Department of Administrative Services, in just a second. So let's listen in on that, and we look forward to a great conversation with Dave today. Well, hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this uh, wonderful uh, opportunity to talk about the state of sustainability for in regards to the state of Oregon. And I would just like to welcome our special guest today who um, we're going to turn over for a slide presentation, but also it's gonna be a, a kind of a question and answer um, opportunity for myself to ask some questions. And when we get through at the end, because I've got viewers out there that are in our audience, if you have questions at the end, um, we will take those questions for Dave. Dave Wartman, who is our statewide sustainability officer who works for the Department of, uh, uh, <laughs> Department of Administrative Services, also known as DAS. Um, and as in his role, Dave provides technical and program resource conservation services to the tenants in the DAS buildings, uh, which are scattered all over the state. And all, he also provides services to other state agencies, local governments, and the public, which, so it starts to sound like everyone in the state of Oregon, uh, Dave. Um, he collaborates with the governor's office on executive orders and state policy, coordinates statewide enterprise efforts for implementation of sustainability practices across Oregon state government. David, he also facilitates the Interagency Sustainability Coordinators Network and supports the Oregon Sustainability Board. How many times can I say sustainability? A lot, it looks like. In addition to his work in the state of Oregon over his 25 year career, Dave has also been a journalist, a researcher and sustainability consultant in both the US and Australia. Dave, welcome. Uh, thanks for being with us today. I am grateful to be here, Al. Super, okay, well let's, um, Let's get started here. Just kind of tell me a little bit about, um, you know, uh, a day in the life of a sustainability officer, because there's, most people have probably never met one. So this is an opportunity to kind of get an idea of what your job entails. So fill us in, Dave. Sure thing, yeah. Um, you know, first off, I just want to say that for me, this is a, it's a pretty, it's a rewarding and important job. And, you know, as I have, um, networked around. I, there are only really a handful of states that have sustainability officers or managers, um, to my knowledge. So uh, it's really kind of a unique thing for Oregon to have this kind of position. And um, I've been in the position for about three years now. Um, the sustainability board, which I will um, describe a little bit later um, uh, down the road, really has fought for this position within DAS. And I'm really grateful that they did that. Um, but in general, my job on a day-to-day -day basis entails working with our state agencies to coordinate and support sustainability across state government, as you mentioned. Um, we are looking at stewardship of resources as well as you know, cost efficiencies. That's a pretty broad statement, I realize, and, um, and really the job is really diverse in terms of topics and activities um, on any given day. I might be meeting with the governor's office on environmental justice or climate change, um, writing a statewide policy on saving energy and water, serving resources, um, supporting an agency's green team as they try to promote sustainability within their own um, agency and organization, um, or facilitating our interagency sustainability coordinators network. Um, and then sometimes I get my hands dirty doing um, audits of our trash or promoting composting I've got a few folks that help me, but in a lot of cases, I'm a one person show. And so I really get involved with um, all aspects from a boardroom, you know, to the, to the break room and sorting through trash. So it's, it's a, it's a diverse job. Um, I love it and uh, really get to be involved in a lot of different things. Sounds like a lot of fun, Dave, especially the going through the garbage piece. That's as, I love that as weird as that sounds. I've done it a bunch of times and it, it's a, uh, it's uh, it's always kind of fun to find out what people are are, are uh, throwing away, and you can, you know, um, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Um, so, Dave, I know that 
as a sustainability officer, uh, it's it's a very you've gone into this you've come into this fairly method method you are methodical in your approach. Um, what are what are you must have come up with some some objectives that you guys are working on. So tell us about what those priorities might be that you are trying to tackle in your role as a sustainability officer. Sure thing. Um, well, I would say first and foremost. Um, top of mind is climate change. And, you know, as we've witnessed over these past few weeks, um, we're already seeing the effect of climate change in Oregon. Um, if you look at trends around um, acres burned from wildfire in the U.S. annually since 1980, we're seeing a clear upward trend. Um, Ten of the hottest years globally have occurred over the past five years. And, you know, even our own um, Oregon Climate Change Research Institute out of Oregon State has documented that our own climate in Oregon is warmed by about two degrees. Um, so we're already seeing the effects. And uh, Governor Brown signed this May really a bold um, and ambitious executive order to address climate change. And she has directed agencies to make reducing greenhouse gas emissions a priority in pretty much everything they do. So we have the Department of Environmental Quality working on a regulatory program to cap emissions from various sectors. We have the Department of Transportation looking at a multi-pronged effort to reduce emissions from our transportation systems in Oregon. Um, Department of Forestry working on a study about sequestering carbon in forests. And uh, my own agency, DAS, is looking at how we can expand electric vehicles and charging in our own fleet. And then we have a bunch of agencies that are working on what's called our climate adaptation framework, which is adapting to the fact that our climate has already changed. And so how do we help agencies prepare for a changing climate and how we manage natural resources, where we locate buildings, um, and really uh, um, everything we do. So um, it's really a big task. It, and I would say the next priority is water. And this is a, a very uh, important priority again for the governor. And it kind of goes along with climate change as we know. Um, and so we're looking at um, how we can save water within our agencies. We have several agencies that have been working since 2015 to reduce their own water use and did a, do a better job of even measuring how much water they're using and tracking that over time. And then we have um, a 100 year water vision that um, the governor has initiated with some agencies to figure out how we can manage our water resources and our water infrastructure well into the future with um, the increasing frequency of drought, um, which many of our parts of our state are in right now. Okay, that's a yeah. that's a bunch. Yeah, I've got a couple more actually. Oh, I can. Oh, I can sorry. I, yeah, it's hard. We're not seeing your face there. So yeah, go yeah. ahead. Keep going. My apologies. So two more I wanted to share. Um, one is just electric vehicles. So uh, the governor signed an executive order in 2017 to try and put more than 50,000 new electric vehicles on Oregon's roads and um, her latest executive order uh, in this year kind of doubled down on that to help increase our EV charging infrastructure and get more vehicles um, on the road. And then last but certainly not least, um, something that many people may not associate with sustainability but equity. So if you look at our Sustainability Act, it defines sustainability in terms of not only environmental, but economic and community objectives. And um, as a lot of discussions have pointed out this year, we have some um, work to do around equity in our state and in our country. Um, where that intersects with my work is around issues such as climate justice, that some of the um, communities most affected by climate change in our state are um, communities of color or low income communities. And so we are really trying to look at how we can address some of our other environmental issues through an equity lens. And um, the board, sustainability board has been working on this with um, some other groups that we're fortunate to have here in Oregon. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's a lot of priorities. And it is a lot of priorities. Yeah. Um, and they're all related, um, but, and they're all very important. And so we're, we're busy but we're busy in a, a way that I think is really uh, necessary for us to be uh, moving forward on these issues. 
I don't think anybody that's listening right now would disagree with that, Dave. I think that's uh, absolutely, they are related in this amazing way and uh, they all are important. But thinking about this, so this, these are broad categories and, and there's, you know, they always say the devil's in the details, right? And it's, I hear that all the time and it's, it really is true. So are there any of these that you've gotten into which you go, what you like specific projects, like for example, the water piece, our, our electric vehicles, one of these that um, climate change is a particular project that you've kind of really gotten into that you are, are either proud of or really like to, or want to share? Look at that. Yes, as a matter of fact, um, this is actually a report that we are going to be issuing um, to the governor today from my own agency um, about how we are going to be integrating climate change into all of our decisions, um, our operations, our planning, our budgeting um, within DAS. And one of the areas that we've looked at, which is really interesting, is um, the environmental impacts of the stuff we procure, the goods and the services. Um, a lot of times when we think about greenhouse gas emissions, we think about the stuff kind of coming out of our tailpipes or associated with our building energy use. But really, if we look at the uh, energy and the resources it takes to create concrete or produce food or um, make off supplies or computers, there are a lot of greenhouse gas emissions that go into that. And so what we figured out is that if we look at our procurement and try and figure out how we can reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in the stuff that we buy, that we can have a really significant impact because we buy a lot of stuff, as you can imagine. And we also have price agreements that local governments and other public entities can use to buy, buy our stuff. So um, this is really important. So we partnered with the Department of Environmental Quality and we looked at a whole bunch of different topic areas and, and goods and we figured out that construction materials, IT equipment, food, fuels, off supplies and vehicles were our largest impact area. So now we can start figuring out how we can work with our suppliers to buy lower carbon options or even reduce the amount of stuff that we buy to begin with which is always um, an efficient and smart thing to do. Um, we've got a bunch of things we're working on with Energy Trust of Oregon to make our buildings more efficient. Uh, we have a strategy that we've rolled out to manage our, what we call our plug loads in our buildings. So anything that plugs into a wall, um, there are a lot of uh, opportunities to reduce energy there. And I would say just day to day, we have about 20 agencies that have sustainability plans and I'm constantly working with them to revise and update their plans and figure out what they can be doing in their agencies to carry out a lot of these actions. Okay, that's, uh, that's pretty good stuff. And I know, you know, the, you were mentioning the, um, uh, the energy that goes into products. Uh, it absolutely, one of the big things that I know in, in my world, I get a lot of people who are, um, complaining about the, you know, they, they can't recycle the packaging that comes with their, whatever it is that they, they purchased. And the focus, we've, we spent a lot of time focusing on that packaging, but the reality is it's really the, the focus should be on what was in that package. Because we well, usually that's what has the big impacts on our environment, all the energy and resources that went into that thingamabob that they just purchased. Um, versus the small amount of plastic. And of course, yes, that we still need to make packaging um, as sustainable as possible. I'm not saying that that's not true, but um, you've, you've, hit the, you've hit one of the nails on the, uh, on the head um, in my world anyway, when you, when you brought all this up. So, so Dave, you are doing all this, uh, one guy, um, and you've got, do you have, you have somebody working with you now? I have um, two people that support me, I would say part-time, but a lot of the time I'm, I'm on my own. Okay, so there's only, how, how many employees in the state? I, I've, I think I've got this figure, 40,000? 40, yes, we have about 40,000 employees and about 100 different agencies, boards, and commissions. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big organization. Yeah, so I, I would say um, you've, you've, you walked in there and said, challenge accepted. So how do you, what do you, how do you do that? How do you get around to some of these things? Because a lot of these things, as you said, they're really important. Yeah, and you know, when I started it, frankly, it was a little bit overwhelming to figure out 
you know, how to tackle all these things and, and, you know, what I could do to be the most effective and create the most impact. And I would say one of the things that I looked at is what I call leverage points. So figuring out, like I said, where I could, where I could have the most impact. So I think procurement is one great example. Um, the fact that we do buy so much stuff and we have a procurement program in DAS um, and we have price agreements. And so I would say that's a, a great leverage point to say, you know, we can create a system to look at all of our price agreements and figure out how we can reduce our environmental footprint in the stuff that we buy. Um, another example I'll give you is real estate. People may not think about this, but we have over 650 leases for buildings around the state with private landowners, as well as DAS leasing our space to other tenants. If we can build into those leases um, considerations around energy efficiency or water efficiency or where the buildings are located, if they're near transit, you know, those are sort of the things that we can really um, make some great strides in if we can um, attack that at, at, at the point of creating the leases and how we decide um, what to do and, and where we locate our, our staff and our buildings. And then I would say another area is statewide policy. Uh, my agency has statewide, has authority to write policies that all agencies have to follow. And so while it's a little bit of a stick approach, um, it is also a, a very effective approach and a lot of, um, a lot of folks uh, in other agencies appreciate that we can support them with policy. Um, and then I would say the second thing is really, how can I inspire people and how can I what I call champion the champions. So we can have a strong network of people who are engaged um, in sustainability. So we have our sustainability coordinators network. We created a green team toolkit so that agencies could um, create their own and create and support their own green teams. Um, we have training materials we've developed. And of course, we have a lot of communication that we do um, out to agencies. So uh, best practices and articles and things that they can repurpose and communicate within their own agency. So it's really trying to multiply the effect of one or two people um, through those leverage points and through um, championing the champions. That sounds like a good way to do it. Um, and how, how long have you been at this now, Dave? It's been a little over three years. Okay, three years. So I, I would say just what little I know of what you've done over there, uh, that you've done quite a bit, and uh, I know that people are giving you kudos for your efforts. And during that time, do you have any uh, big wins that you are kind of proud of that you feel like, wow, we really, we, we, we got something, you know, you went after something and you got it done and, and it felt good. Well, I think you're gonna like this answer, Alan, because um, I'm gonna make a pitch for Marion County's EarthWise program <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, we'll take it. So in, uh, in 2019, um, we had as a goal in our, our own DAS sustainability plan to have all of our buildings certified or recertified under the EarthWise program. And so in 19, 2019, we set out um, over the year to get as many state agency buildings certified or recertified as we could under EarthWise. Um, you know, it's, it's just such a great program because it gives our agencies a framework in which they can pursue sustainability across their operations from waste reduction and recycling to procurement, energy use, water. Um, those, those, those folks listening um, who are uh, EarthWise certified members um, know. So it also energizes green teams to rally around a project and a cause. So I would, by 2020, we had over 26 agencies that had participating in getting certified. These are some of the happy faces of the folks who got their, um, got their, their plaque, their wheel, um, showing their certification. And, um, you know, people just really liked being involved in, in, and um, achieving it. So it was a really great um, program. We, we had a, an event to recognize everybody um, uh, in early 2020. And um, I'm sure that the, those efforts are gonna carry on. And then the other thing I will mention is um, composting. We did a pilot program in 2019 in one of our DAS buildings. We had a lot of folks who were skeptical about it, but we piloted it, it worked out, staff loved it, and we had very few problems. And we were able to expand that and offer it to all of our DAS tenants in our 
R40 buildings in Salem, and then other agencies have also picked it up. And I know between our two largest office buildings, we were able to compost over two tons of food waste on, on an annual basis. And um, especially with all the frustration around recycling over the last few years, it really feels like a big win and something that, again, our, our staff and our tenants can really get involved in and see a, a tangible difference. So those are two things that I would, I would mention. That's a good one, because uh, those are the, the, you know, the Capitol Mall folk mostly. Um, but there's, there's so many state agencies within Marion County that it's, um, it's uh, almost an embarrassment of riches here uh, when you talk about um, both jobs and opportunities to, to, to move that needle. And, and Dave, you also mentioned, in the, all the, you're talking about all the boards and, and commissions. You also mentioned the Oregon Sustainability Board. And I think you sit on that, uh, which would be crazy if you weren't on there, right? Um, so can you tell us who they are and what they do? Yeah, and to clarify, I actually am not on the board. Um, what? I support I support the board as a staff person from DAS, but okay. Um, but it's an eleven member board, and um, this is a picture of um, some of the board members. We did a trip out to Condon and Boardman a couple of years ago. The board likes to go out and. Uh, travel around the state and engage communities in what they're doing around sustainability. And so this was one trip we took, but uh, 11 member board, um, it was created by the Sustainability Act. The members are all appointed by the governor and uh, they represent business, academia, local government, forestry and ranching, um, consulting. Uh, so it's a really diverse group and they're from all, all over the state. Um, they mainly work with agencies on integrating uh, many of the topics I've mentioned into their operations and planning. So we have over 20 agencies that have developed sustainability plans with the board's help um, that helps integrate sustainability again into their operations and their programming and their policy. Um, they also take on occasionally special projects. So they collaborated with our Department of Environmental Quality on uh, doing an environmental footprint study for uh, concrete and food a few years ago. And just in general, they're a great source of knowledge and wisdom and feedback for my work and for all of our agencies. Um, we also have uh, DAS and the board have been working on a project to help agencies measure and manage greenhouse gas emissions in their own operations that we're hoping to roll out over the, the rest of the year. So that is a collaborative effort. That's another, just another great example of how the board is really helping state agencies. Yeah, it's, it's, boy, it's great. It, and uh, I know a few of those folks that are in that picture and you, you've got a good board to work with. So that's, it's uh, always wonderful to have folks that are both knowledgeable and willing to give their time because, man, uh, this, this, I don't think people realize just how much of the, um, all the, the, the scene between the cracks, both in government and society in general is basically made up of people who volunteer to do stuff. So, um, my hats off to all of our volunteers wherever they serve. Um, Dave, we've, we've covered a bunch of stuff here that you do, but I don't think we could, I would say that we've completed this uh, conversation without mentioning kind of the, I'm um, looking out my back window here where I'm recording all this, um, seeing all the smoke in the air and thinking about the 600 pound gorilla, which is the, um, that fire that's been burning uh, back basically at our doorsteps. And um, I remember we were chatting last week and you were uh, got the blue level two notice at your home and suddenly you're, you went into, um, you know, preparing for go mode. So it seems like your work with sustainability would be connected with all this. And I was wondering if you could tie what's going on in the canyon with your work. Well, sure thing. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I had uh, kind of come to, um, I'm prepared to chat with you about COVID and stuff, but you're right. I mean, these fires have really just overtaken um, everything, our lives, um, our attention. Um, you know, it's just, seeing it feels, uh, feels tragic. I know that um, the last sustainability board meeting um, we had, we, we went around and everyone shared about how this was affecting them and, you know, people were, um, at one, one sense, angry at, at 
sort of the mismanagement and inaction that you know led to some of these increases in wildfire and sad that a lot of our you know prized gems in terms of uh, communities and people affected and some of our beautiful natural areas um, you know may be uh, altered for a long time um, may never be the same and so you know right now our agency is really in um, crisis mode trying to uh, manage um, support evacuees and, and communities and um, help ensure uh, people have support that, th that they need. But for me, you know, in the long term, I think it really just puts an exclamation point on how important it really is for us to continue to be um, vigilant about not only um, reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and, and showing leadership in that, but also preparing for climate change um, and adapting um, where we can. So, you know, in terms of forests, um, I'm sure this is going to spark a conversation among myself and other agencies that are involved in sustainability about um, proper forest management, you know, allowing fires to occur without turning into these big conflagrations, and really how do we maintain healthy watersheds that support wildlife and people. Um, you know, all this is really important for sustainability. Um, and I, you know, did put a picture here of a forest that uh, was burned and now we see, um, you know, some, some regrowth coming in and, uh, you know, if given the opportunity, our forest can be resilient. And so I think we need to also just figure out, take a long view and say, how can we help cherish these special places in a time of a changing climate and um, do the best we can to uh, ensure that, that they have the, the opportunity to recover. Okay. Yeah. So quickly, you want to, you, I, you, you've got this slide on there that says COVID wildfires and sustainability. And, and I think you did um, address that connection there with sustainability and wildfires, but you want to go ahead and, and take a quick shot at the, the COVID and how that affects sustainability, how they disinfect this new, pandemic? Yeah, so, you know, real quickly, you know, I, um, we've been really thinking about this, and of course, with a lot of uh, state agency staff working remotely, um, we're seeing some changes, and so with our buildings not being occupied, we're able to change schedules in our lighting and our heating to um, reduce energy use, but at the same time, we have to ventilate them for the virus. Um, so, but I think that one of the biggest places we've seen um, a change is in uh, commuting and we're actually doing an analysis now on how much we've been able to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from people telecommuting. And so this chart here just shows that we did a survey of um, staff that work around the Capitol Mall in Salem and, you know, um, 71 to 78% drive alone to get to work. And so a lot of those people aren't driving anymore. And so we're seeing a big drop in um, the emissions from driving, uh, from commuting. And um, that, that is a, not an insignificant uh, outcome of what we've seen. So just, we'll be processing this a little more and I'm sure it'll change the way we work long-term. Um, there are obviously some downsides too in terms of social isolation from this, but, um, but from a sustainability standpoint, I think there's some good lessons we can learn that we can carry into the future. Okay, thank you. Um, so one last uh, parting moment before we go to uh, questions. Uh, Dave, would you, do you got any last words that you wanna pass on or uh, words to cheer folks on to have a, keep them ready to go into the, you know, to into the breach, so to speak? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I know it's it's easy to feel down and somewhat helpless now. I know I've I've definitely been feeling that over the last week or two, and finding myself saying the serenity prayer many times a day <laughs> to remind myself of um, having courage to you know work on the things that I can and accept the things that I can't. Um, but I would say you know what what I'm trying to do, and I would encourage others to do, is to stay focused on solutions and committing to taking action. Um, you know, there are things we can do in our own homes um, in terms of reducing our own carbon footprint, um, how you travel around, making your voice heard, 
by voting and engaging with elected officials on issues you care about. Um, and I would say just in general, um, you know, focusing on a positive vision for what we want for our future and working toward it. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a healthy exercise to, to really say, okay, this is what we want the future to look like and let's figure out what we can do to make that happen. And um, for me, at least that, that helps motivate me and car to carry on in this really important work. Okay. That sounds like a good one. Um, so, uh, Dave, if you would um, go ahead and do you have a, is there a, a last slide there or is this it? No, this is it. Okay. So can you take that off now and let's go back into where we can see you. Um, I'm going to open up the floor here for some questions. Um, let's see if we've got one. Um, let's see. Yeah. So for those, I just saw this, there's some folks who were um, asking for uh, to get your, get your face on there earlier, um, Dave. And I just want to let them know that I, uh, just so they, so they could see you better in order to, to help kind of read your lips. Um, and we will, when we post this on YouTube, it, we will redo it and it will have, um, uh, it'll be the, it'll be text so people can also read it along with it. So okay. um, put that out there. And also there was a question here about uh, building with sustainable materials, um, Adobe, straw bale, cob, et cetera. How can people make sure they're building legally if they choose to use alternative uh, the, uh, materials, um, which I, as I understand it are mostly fireproof if done correctly. That is the question. Is there, is that one you feel like you could answer, Dave? Um, you know, I know we've been making some changes to our, um, our state building codes uh, <clears throat> around um, energy efficiency, trying to, to make the codes more energy efficient and to um, create solar ready um, buildings. Um, in terms of Adobe and um, straw bale, uh, frankly, I'm not quite up on how our state building codes um, handle those. Um, I know we have some stretch codes and some alternative paths that um, probably would, would allow that sort of thing. Um, but that is a, a good question for even our, our folks in our um, building codes division in the uh, Department of Consumer and Business Services. Um, they would certainly know that, um, that they would have a better answer for that. Okay. Um, is there anyone else that has a question for Dave? Chance to talk about statewide sustainability? You can just write on the chat. Oh, here we go. Is it possible for us to access the materials and tools you created for helping departments and stakeholders build green teams? Oh, our green team toolkit? Yeah, do you have something like that? Yeah, we have a toolkit I'd be happy to share with anybody who wants it. Um, it's got in it uh, some materials around um, how you create your green team, what sort of topics you might want to prioritize. It's got a, a sample survey in there. It's got a sample charter for the group. So um, I'd be happy to share that with anybody who wants it. I tell you what, Dave, I always send this, uh, the podcast where it, when it shows up on YouTube to everybody, a link there. So if you, everybody that signed up here today, so if you would, uh, want to just send me any links that you think would be helpful, we can sh I can share that with everybody that signed up, whether they're here present right now or not. Okay. Does that sound good? Yeah. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Um, from Bailey Payne. You remember Bailey Payne? Um, yeah. Dave, it's inspiring to hear about all the work you're doing. Are there projects that you can think of that help support your work that a master recycler could help with? Um, you know, we've always had uh, uh, help. Uh, I, I think one of the biggest challenges for us is that um, it's really complicated for us to pull together our data from our agencies on, um, on recycling and composting. Uh, you know, we get, we get data from 
um, our, our recycler um, who helps us with that. And we also get uh, data from our waste hauler um, on bills, but we actually created waste scorecards for agencies um, a couple years ago. Um, you know, something like that, I think just helping pull the data together and um, continuing to engage with agencies on the state, the state of recycling, because I think there's always, there's still confusion about it. Um, so just helping with data and helping with messaging, uh, we can always use help with that. So it, yes, absolutely, Bailey. Yeah. For those of you who the name Bailey Payne either, you, it, it strikes a, a, a memory or a note of fear. Um, <laughs> Bailey, Bailey used to work with uh, us in Marion County and he was there when we walked through for the very first Earthwise certification day back in 2010. That was he and I uh, were together on that endeavor and it was, uh, it was really amazing. Um, so um, let's see here. So uh, Dave, I've got a couple of folks who would like to um, uh, have something that they want to address the group to. So I'm going to start first with John Miller. I'm going to unmute him. And John, you're, 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 you now have the floor. Great. Thank you, Alan. Um, well, I chair the Oregon Sustainability Board, um, and Dave is our um, great staff. And um, I, I agree with everything Dave said. And <clears throat> just a comment about <clears throat> Dave and people like you, Alan, the, often in the public sector, you encounter people that would be stars in any sector, public or private. And <clears throat> I, I keep thinking Dave has a twin because he does more work than <laughs> anybody I know. And uh, there's another one of them out there, but I helped the governor lobby to get this position funded. And we're so lucky because we found a, <clears throat> somebody who is doing it incredibly well with great vigor. And, um, and I think your program, I, I, our Wildwood Mahonia companies are in, in Earthwise and have been for some years. And it's really helped us to toe the line, even though we're green to begin with, you make us better. And um, DAS as an agency is doing things that <clears throat> under Katie Koba's leadership that are just incredible and including enabling people like Dave to take the lead in, in a lot of areas. And <clears throat> the governor obviously is juggling a whole lot of balls in the air that change color and size before they even come down. So I think it's, it's wonderful to work in a, in a, as a private industry person with a group of mixed public and private folks on the board. Um, and just a, a comment about the fires. Uh, I grew up in the North San Am Canyon and worked in the woods and mills up there as a, as a young person. And, <clears throat> and We've got an evacuee living on our house in Salem and uh, family and, and the impacts on all of us, including Marion County and DAS are just gonna be incredible. And I, <clears throat> I just feel for those folks and it's so sad. And uh, for me, a good example is, is George Atia who led the charge to get Opal Creek uh, set aside as wilderness and we're not sure where George is now. His, he's, he chose to stay in his house, which burned apparently, and, and I hope he's okay. But, you know, Opal Creek flows into the Little North Fork of the Santa Yam, which flows into the North Santa Yam, <clears throat> which flows into the Willamette, which flows into the Columbia. And the Columbia watershed is the size of France. And so our little uh, bailiwick here is so key and a great example of those communities that are going to need a lot of help as they try to recover, but I'm pretty convinced that <clears throat> resilience is going to shine in the North San Diego Canyon and Marion County and Oregon. So I'm, I'm encouraged, but sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, John, for sharing that and uh, being part of this today and also all your work on the Sustainability Board. And um, before the Sustainability Board, you've done so many other things that it would be too numerous to count at this moment, but um, you're a shining star. Um, I've also got um, Martin Brown has a um, comment or question he'd like to address. And I'm going to unmute him here. There you go. 
Hey there, Ken. You hear me? Hello, Martin. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, great. Um, well, I'm Martin Brown, and I'm from uh, Oregon Department of Environmental Quality in the Materials Management Program. Uh, we used to be the Solid Waste and Recycling Program, but now we're, we're, we're trying to be a, a lot bigger. Um, and first, I just want to say how grateful I am that we're just having this meeting at all, and there is a state sustainability officer. Um, it was just a relief to me to actually hear that somebody else in the state is even thinking about the same stuff that, that I'm thinking about. Um, so I, um, I just wanna highlight a few things that, that first I thought were great before I get to my question. Um, first, I, you know, um, I'm really glad that, that, that you emphasize the, uh, the purchasing project. Um, which I actually helped a, a, a little bit on the analysis for that. Um, and because, you know, that is really talking about like the full, the, the, the full environmental impact that we're having, that we have responsibility for um, through the things that we do and buy. And uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that, that DAS is, is moving forward with, with something about purchasing. And um, and uh, similarly, I, I think our host, uh, you know, mentioned that when uh, you're talking about recycling, like sometimes a better topic might have been to talk about what was actually in the package, because once again, that's you know, it's really that's usually the thing where where all the environmental effects are. So thank you guys for working on that and and bringing it forward for other people. Um, Finally, I guess, uh, you know, another thing I heard Dave say uh, that I'm, I'm really trying to work with at DEQ is that, you know, when we're trying to create a sustainable world, like there's a million different projects we could do, right? And um, so one of the most important decisions that we have to make as state workers is how are we going to spend our time? And um, so I'm really thinking a lot about that. And um, all right, so there's my statement. But uh, my question is this: uh, earlier, you uh, mentioned like two priorities in terms of like issues or things to manage, um, and uh, you mentioned um, climate change, water, and equity. And I just wonder, uh, you know, why those were the sort of three priorities? I mean, because. There's other stuff, other environmental effects that you know people also want to measure, such as toxicity and eutrophication and stuff. Like, why did those three things rise to the top? Well, I think um, climate for me. Uh, first of all, I know that climate and water um, are two top issues of this governor, and so she has said so, and so. And we've seen it in her executive orders around water and climate, which um, DAS, as the administrative agency for the governor, we are tasked with carrying out, you know, her, her implementing her priorities. So part of it is, is guided by, you know, what, what our leadership is focusing on. Um, I would say that, as I mentioned before, I think all those issues are very interrelated. Um, <clears throat> and climate to me is a very cross-cutting issue. It, of course, it intersects with procurement, as we've mentioned, um, energy, um, water, um, how we handle uh, our waste, um, our transportation system. So, you know, with embedded in climate itself are so many other different um, um, issues that, uh, um, you know, it, tackling climate is also tackling a lot of other things. And, um, and then as far as the, the equity side of things, um, I know that there have been some really, um, lively discussions in the sustainability board that for a long time agencies had been focused on the environmental side of sustainability. Um, but as I mentioned in the definition of sustainability, it's really about environment, economy, and community. And so um, I think that what we're discovering is that as we have um, addressed a lot of things around the environmental side of things that the the community or the equity side of things maybe has has, has gotten a lot 
less attention. And so there are, are a lot of inequities in terms of, of as you mentioned, air toxics and, and people's um, exposure to those, uh, where people live in terms of, of uh, flooding and um, heat and those sort of things. Um, and just a general exposure of frontline communities to the impacts of, of, of climate change or air toxins. Um, and so, again, I think the equity thing is really complex, but it's one that a lot of our agencies really haven't thought a lot about, um, other than I would say folks like, you know, DEQ and your um, rulemaking and um, the Oregon Health Authority, but a lot of our other agencies are really um, just starting to, to um, tackle this issue. So um, those are some of the reasons why I picked some of those priorities. And then, you know, the EVs kind of, again, we have two executive orders that, you know, direct us to take action on those and transportation is our largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in Oregon um, when looking at the emission based inventory and so tackling uh, transportation through vehicle electrification is um, is a priority that we are looking at. Thank you Dave so much for uh, addressing all of our questions today. Um, Everyone, you've, you've been listening to um, a webinar uh, put on by Marion County Environmental Services. That, as I let you know before, that this is being recorded. It will be turned into a YouTube podcast that you'll be able to watch and download. And so, um, and eventually it will become a well, part of our radio program on Waste Matters on the Air, KMUZ, weekly Thursdays at one o'clock. And I, again, I'd like to thank you all for coming in and being part of this. Dave, um, you're an all-star, and we appreciate all the work that you and your crew are doing, uh, whether, uh, whether it's um, your, your, your close folks who work directly, get paid to work with you, versus, and all those wonderful volunteers, and the politicians who are willing to um, hang their shingle out there saying, I believe in climate um, climate." justice and climate fighting and um, want to be part of that, part of that solution. So uh, with that, I will bid everyone here adieu and um, keep up the good fight. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, everyone.